go back to comp three here and I want to create an environment. So I need to make a new layer, a new comp, so a new comp, like so. And uh, we're at, we can add uh, fractal noise or we can add turbulent noise, but we'll add fractal noise. So go over to effects and presets. Fractal, fractal noise, double click on that, add it, or drag it to that, oops, nothing to drag it to yet, need to make a new salad, sorry. Getting ahead of myself here, there we go, now I double click on it. And I go to fractal noise type, and I'm going to uh, do the thing I did before where I bring the contrast up and the brightness down, to give it sort of a more dramatic look to it, and we'll uh, go to the sub setting here and I drop this down to zero you'll see how it gets simpler looking like that and I want to stretch it out again as I did before to transform so I'm going to knock the scale down a little bit like this to begin with and then I turn off uniform scale and we make it much higher kind of stretch it out like so and I think that's all I want to do I think that'll probably be enough all right, so there's that, and if I use that as an environment, this is black and white, which doesn't add any color to the scene. I want to add some color to the scene. So I can, I can put color in this layer, but it's actually uh, easier, I think, to add color to a separate layer and then blend the two together. So I'm going to add a separate layer here. Right-click, New, Solid, and I'm going to make it a certain color. So I'm going to make it look like gold again. Like that there. Something like that. Maybe make it a little bit brighter, a little less orange, something like that. Click OK. And that, I'll make that to just solid like that. But now, if I blend these two together, we'll have some of the gold show through and some of the black show through. And you blend it together using a blending mode. So I click on the toggle switches down here. And that switches to the mode and the track mat. We're worried about the mode here. If I go through the mode, I can sort of see how the various modes work. There's a whole list of them, right? But I can work my way through the mode by holding Shift and then, oops, oops not Shift. Click on that guy to make it active. Shift, uh, hyphen or equal sign. So hyphen takes me down through it. I'm just looking through here. There, now we're beginning to see some blending modes kick in here. And I'm going to, ah, oh, now we're talking. That's color. That's not the one I want, though. Keep on going here until I see one that I like. Not quite. Nope, <laughs> definitely not. Ah, that looks pretty good. Vivid light, maybe? Hmm. Uh, overlay. So we're going to go with overlay here. And I, I'm looking at the color there, and I actually want to make the color a little bit oranger. So if you want to change the solid after the fact, now I've got, just so you know, I've got overlay selected here. Could have picked a different one, but overlay works for me. And if you don't like the color after the fact like this, you can always go back and change it by going to Layer, Solid Settings, and changing the color down here. And I think I'd rather get a different a little more orange or color to it now that I look at it. Maybe slightly brighter like that. Click OK. All right, so now we've created this environment, which is called, which is Comp 4 in our particular case. Just be aware of that. So go back to Comp 3. I'm going to add a light to this comp before we go any far, further, because I want to illuminate that text there. So right-click, New, Light. And I'll make it a point light, and we'll bring the intensity up. We'll just see how it looks here when I, when I pop it on. If it looks good, then we're fine. It casts shadows. That's good. And we'll pull it toward the front a bit here, so it's hard to see where it is. So I'm going to change from the active camera to the custom view. And I can see right there. And I can see that it really probably should be a little bit more intense. So I'm going to double click on the light and wrap up the intensity some more. There we're talking. Now ah, we're getting there. Click OK. And I'll go back from the custom view to the active camera. Now ah, we're talking. Looking good. Now we're going to add the environment. So to add the environment, I go back to the project panel, and that was called Comp 4, remember? So that's our environment there. If I bring it down here, just add it to this comp anywhere. It doesn't make a difference where I add it. It'll put this whole solid thing on there, which is not what we want. But we convert it to 3D. And after we convert it to 3D, we now have the option to turn it into an environment layer. So right-click and make it an environment layer. And now it's, it's wrapping itself around the entire scene. Like, it's like your scene, like your text and your floor are now inside a globe, like, a, like, a, like the earth in a, uh, like you, on your countertop or something back in the days when people had globes in their countertops. And now it goes all the way around it. And you don't probably want to see it, but you do want to see its effect. 
So what you do is you go down to here and you open this up a bit under Options. Appears in Reflections. Yeah, we want that to be on, definitely, but we want it to be only, not just on. We want it to be only. So I click on that, now it's only. So you don't see it anymore, but you do see it, its reflection there. And let me see. Where is the floor? Because the floor, I'm surprised. Oh, it does not show reflections that well. I'm surprised I'm not showing reflections. Did I turn that off by mistake? Uh, appears in reflections. I want it to uh, be reflected. This is a little strange. I'm going to say accept lights and turn that off. That's, there we go. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Not sure why I'm not seeing reflections here. If I turn that on, let me let do it. There. I would think I'd see reflections here. I don't know why. I'm not seeing reflections here. <laughs> oh, that's why. Because I, I didn't bother to turn off reflection on this one. I guess I was so intent on doing the one I'd done previously, I'd forgotten that I'd not done this one yet. And now I get some reflection showing up. That's more like it. Wondering why that was happening. Okay. And let's see. So now we've got that. And now if I can animate the um, the environment, just so you can see how that works. If I go up to the environment, i got the rotation. I'll rotate it on the y-axis, which is, uh, this, I think in this case, the, let's see which axis we want to rotate it on. Should be the y-axis because that's not tilted. So let's see how that works there. We can rotate the environment, and will affect how that. Oops. Yeah, rotate the environment. It'll affect how it looks on the text. Try to rotate it on the x-axis. That's yeah, better, maybe. Huh. You can see it going by here. Mm -hmm. There it goes, goes across the text. So you can see how that works. Now, if I take the text, I'll zoom in a bit on the on this whole thing by pressing the period key. And it won't be quite as sharp because I'm zoomed in a bit, but uh, it's still pretty good. And now if I um, rotate the text, go to the text, and press R, go down to, oh, to the animator, not to the transform, but to the animator, under text, animator. I'm going to use the Y rotation for the texture. We can animate the rotation of the text and see how it reacts to the light as well, like that. Let me take the light again one more time here, double click on you, and increase the intensity of the light just a little bit more. That makes it even cooler. All right, let me just show you quickly uh, the way, I mean, this is gold. If I wanted to uh, make this a different color, I could use a, make it a different color text to begin with. If I want to make it chrome, for example, I'll just show you that one. 